Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, we give you praise today. We magnify your holy name today, Jesus. You are wonderful, God. You are great, God. And you are worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I magnify your holy name today, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus declared that if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. And I just come to lift him up. Anybody come to lift him up today? Anybody come to magnify him today? Anybody come to glorify him today? Hallelujah. We exalt the holy name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is defeated. Jesus is exalted. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We magnify the name of the Lord today. He is a great God. He's worthy to be praised. We want to welcome you. Amen. To these two nights of faith. Amen. And we want to just begin to dig right into the word of the Lord and to share. Hallelujah. How many people know that God is turning things in your favor? Yes. Hallelujah. Can I declare to somebody that God is turning things in your favor? Hallelujah. It don't matter how crazy it looks. It don't matter what is going on right now. I declare that God is turning things in your favor. Yes, God. Amen. We honor the Lord today. I want to get right into the word of the Lord. Amen. Begin to declare. The Bible declares in the book of Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse number 4, the word of the Lord declares that man shall not live uh -huh. by bread alone, yes, uh -huh. but by every word uh -huh. that proceeded out of the mouth of of God. Yes, they well. shall not live by prayer alone. Yes, sir. But our livelihood is out of coming from the word of God. Yes. He says, we will not live by bread alone, but by every word uh -huh. that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Romans, the 10th chapter, verse number 17, the Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing yes. and hearing yes. by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing. Yes. and hearing by the word of God. Yes. We are in a a critical season spiritually. We are in a critical season spiritually. When you look around and you look at the debates and the presidential election and you see all the stuff that is going on, it lets you know that times are critical. Yes. Times are very critical. It is crazy now, even in the in the in the church arena, people don't know whether they're coming or going. I've never seen so many depressed saints. I've never seen so much disloyalty. I've never seen so many things go as crazy as they've been, which lets me know that time is coming to a close. Yes. And Jesus is on his way back. Yes. But, but, but the Bible declares that when the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith on earth. It is, it's funny to me how so many people claim to know God, but they don't believe God. Well. So many people claim to have relationship with him, but they don't have faith in him. They don't believe in him. Now let me start by saying this. The Bible declares in Romans, the 12th chapter, around the third verse, it says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Well, so I want to start by dispelling something. Uh, you, it's not the fact that you don't have faith. It's the fact that your faith has not been worked. Well, help me get this place. See, come on. See, people will let you say things to you as, oh, you don't have faith. You didn't have enough faith. Well, Jesus spoke like this. He said to the disciples, if you had the faith as the grain of a mustard seed, which tells me that it's not a size thing when it comes to faith. It's a maturity level when it comes to faith. It's the level of operation when it comes to faith. I want to submit to you today. That there's a lot of people that are not working their faith. That's oh, it. Come on now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. There's a lot of people that's not working their faith. Uh, can I tell you something? The more you work it, the more comfortable you'll be with it. The more 
you working, the more you learn how to operate. Yeah. Listen, you got faith, you just gotta learn how to operate. Well, uh, so the Bible says he's dealt to every man the measure of faith. See, we've heard for years, uh, it's a faith issue. It's a faith issue. But I want to submit to you tonight that it's not really a faith issue. It's a revelation and relationship issue. Well, he's dealt to us the measure of faith. But the Bible records these words uh, in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, that the people that know their God shall be strong and new exploits. So I submit to you tonight that it is a revelation and a relationship issue, not so much a faith issue. Uh, because when you know God, when you're intimate with him, when you have relationship with him, you can't help but believe him. Y'all right. ain't talking to me. If you know God, to know him is to trust him. No wonder the Bible picks it up in Proverbs 3. It says that with a trust in the Lord with all of, of our heart, we're to lean not to our own understanding. He says we're to acknowledge him in all of our ways. And Come on, what? It says, says he will direct our paths. Can I tell you tonight that if God is not directing your path, it's because there's a trust issue. Uh, and if there's a trust issue, it ultimately turns into a faith issue. Uh, because to not believe God is to call him a liar. And he says these words in Numbers 32, that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should be pitted. Uh, when you say you don't believe God, it's the same as calling him a liar. Teach what? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall stand. He declared over in the book of Isaiah, he says, so shall my word be that going out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, well, but it's going to accomplish what I send it to accomplish. All right. Just hunt your neighbor and say, the word still works, the word still works. If God gives you a word, you can hang on that word. Yes. If God speaks something yes. in your life, you can hang on what he speaks. Because whatever God says, it will not return until it's I come to tell somebody, he said it, that settles it. No wonder David declared these words. He said, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. I wish I had about two people to settle his word on the earth. They said, I believe what God says, and his word is settled in my heart. And if his word is settled in my heart, it's going to be settled in my life. Because the Bible says in Matthew 12 and 34, that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So if it's in your heart, it'll come out of your mouth. And according to Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Yeah. I'm going to tell somebody that there's a revelation ready to come out of your mouth, but you got to get it in your heart first. Yes. Come on, come on, come on, Wally. He says, thou faith cometh by hearing. Uh -huh and hearing by the word of God. There are so many uh, misrepresentations when it comes to faith. You've heard things like faith moves God. But after careful research, Apostle Simpson, I've learned that it's not really faith that moves God. Oh, now y'all looking at me. Come on, come on. Apostle, explain yourself. Because watch this. If faith moved God, then that means faith can move God in a direction he might not want it to go. Well, so in other words, you can't have faith and declare it'll make God do anything. Because the reality is this, faith brings reality to grace. Uh, Ephesians 2 says it like this, uh, 2 and 8 says, for by grace you are saved yes. through faith. It is the gift of God, not a works as any man should boast. So in other words, uh, uh, let's help me, can we go a little deeper? Come on, come on, the right. gospel requires it like this, uh, in the first chapter, uh, it says we beheld his glory uh, as the only begotten of the Father, uh, full of grace and truth. Well. So now therein is a revelation, uh, because there's grace, uh, there's truth, uh, and there's faith. Uh, so faith now uh, brings the reality to grace, 
uh, which establishes truth uh, in my life. Uh, but faith will not negate truth uh, because Jesus is truth. Uh, and because Jesus is truth uh, and truth is filled with grace. Uh, so faith will not jump over grace, uh, but faith will bring grace to reality. Uh, what does that mean, Apostle? Uh, it means that faith uh, can't move God uh, in a direction he doesn't want to go. Uh, faith will only bring to reality uh, what God has released. Uh, if it's something God hasn't released, uh, faith can't pull it. Uh, we've heard people preach for years uh, that all you need is faith. Uh, and faith will do this. Uh, and faith will do that. Uh, ah, but what does the Bible say? Uh, John chapter 8, help me Holy Ghost. Uh, chapter 32 says, uh, and you shall know the truth. Uh, and the truth shall make you free. Uh, so the truth is this. Uh, that faith uh, has to be in line uh, with the will of God. Uh, it doesn't matter how Believe. If it's out of his will, faith can't pull it. I wish somebody would help me in this place. Faith can't jump over the word. Faith is in agreement with the word. If the word don't say it, you can have all the faith you want, but it won't become a reality. Well, that's why you got a lot of people that are disgruntled in the church because they're saying, I have and it did not happen. But you had faith, but you didn't have revelation. And you didn't have relationship. Because if you have relationship, it'll birth revelation. And if it births revelation, it'll strengthen your faith. And you won't be believing God for something he'll never do. But my relationship stirs my faith in the right direction. Have I somebody and say, my so I can't believe God for something he's not going to do. Uh, therefore, people say to me, you're always bragging about your prayer life. Now watch this. I'm not saying I'm deep. I'm not even telling you I pray hours and hours. But what I am telling you is there's never been a prayer that I pray, that I believed in my heart, that did not come to pass. Help me, Holy Ghost. I want to give God glory today because I am a living example that whatsoever things you ask in prayer, believing, that shall you receive. Well, let's go over the Psalms a little bit and talk about David that said these words in Psalms 37. That God, I'm sorry, 34. That God will give you the desires of your heart. Well, most people look at that to figure that whatever my heart's desire, God will give it to me. Not so. What he's really saying is God will put the desire in my heart. Yes. And if God puts it there, he's God enough to bring it to pass. I wish I had some help in this place tonight. That if God puts it in my heart, if God puts it in my spirit, then he's Lord enough to manifest it in my life. And so because he put it there, it's going to come to pass. I'll come to tell somebody that what you're believing for in this season has been put there by God. And so since God put it there, he's going to bring it to pass. Lord, have mercy. You remember, Lord, help me out with some Bible. The Bible Bible says, by faith, he was warned of God, of something that they'd never seen before. It had never rained. They'd never seen anything like it. But by faith, he was warned by God. Now, what does faith have to do with it? He has to have relationship, because the authenticity of what God said had to carry weight with Noah, because he reacted to it and started doing something that made him look crazy. Can I stop and tell you something? That if your faith ain't made you look crazy, then you ain't really walking by faith. Help me in this place. If you say you believe God, every now and then, faith gonna make you look crazy. If you say you trust God, every now and then, 
He's going to give you an instruction that nobody understands. I'm so glad I've been delivered from people because people will bind you. People will hold you out because they can't see your vision. Every now and then, when God speaks in your life, he doesn't share it with everybody. By faith, no one was warned. When God didn't make a public announcement, he just warned no one. Every now and then, apostle, God's not going to share the revelation with your circle. Your circle just got to trust the God in you. Now, the problem with that is, is that when you walk by faith, it becomes a lonely because everybody can't hear what you heard. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He gave Noah a word and Noah began to build. Who am I preaching to tonight? God sent me to Arkansas to tell somebody I gave you a word. Now get to build it. Somebody that you have a word now you can go to build it. Thank you, Lord. Don't wait. Thank you, Lord. The word is popular. Don't wait to everybody else. But he gave you a word. Now he said, get to build it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So in by faith. Uh, warned by God. And nobody understands what he's doing. As a matter of fact, they're teasing him. Yes. Can you imagine? He starts building a thing that he doesn't even know what to call it. He don't know if to call it a boat or ark. He don't know what it is. He just know what God said. God wants this. The Holy Ghost is such a master architect that without a blueprint, he goes to work. And I stop and prophesy to somebody that in your stage of obedience, he'll anoint your hands and he'll anoint your eyes to see and build what you never even knew existed. And I tell somebody, you're not going to have a point of reference in this season, but the only reference you'll have is a word from the Lord. That seems to be scarce in this day and time because we look for people popularity. We look to be supported by people. We look to have the approval of man. But if you got the approval of God, that means you're going to be successful. That means, nay, in all of these things, you will be more than a conqueror. Watch this. Hallelujah. So by faith, he Glory was born Thank you. by God. Yes, God. That something is coming. Yes, God. Every now and then, God will pull you in a place yes. where nobody else is there. Yes. Uh -huh. See, we live in a popular time where we want a buddy-buddy relationship with God. Yeah. We want everybody to feel and see what we see. Yes. But in all of my years of being saved, I learned that sometimes it gets lonely to walk with God yes. in terms of physical comfort. Yes, sir. It's not lonely spiritually because he says in Matthew 28 and 18, he says, Lord, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. He said, I'll be with you always until the end of oh, the yeah. earth. So spiritually, I'm not lonely. Yes. But physically, sometimes it's lonely because when God speaks a word, yes. he does not necessarily speak it in a crowd. Why would you go all the way down there and you don't know anybody? Are you sure that God said it? Can you imagine Norm hammering away at this strange object and folk looking at him like, Norm, what are you doing? It's not even a cloud in sight. Yeah. We've never heard of a flood. Why would you be dedicating all this time and effort to this thing that nobody heard of? All right. yeah, come on now. That's, that's peculiar to me because people don't like to be decisive. Come on now. They don't like to speak, to stand out. They want to fit in the clique. Well, you're going to walk by faith. 
You've got to stand out. You've got to operate under an extraordinary level of perseverance. Because at times, nobody will see your vision. That's right. Uh -huh. Amen. I was remodeled at my church, and almost practically nobody could see what I was looking at. Well, that's right. Come when on. it started coming to fruition, Come on, man. they said, man, pastor, wow, I didn't see it. Right. And I said, that's because God didn't tell it to you. That's right. See, 